Hey, yo, what's going on, YouTube, man? It's your boy, Action Jackson. And in today's video, man, I'm going to be giving you guys my thoughts and my reactions after the New York Giants game, man. Let's get it. All right, man. So you guys told you guys can tell by the beginning of the video when I first started out giving out what the video was going to be about. We won the game by 24 points. It was a good game. Uh, it was it was sloppy. We could have done a whole lot better. This game should have been more of a blowout. Yeah, we beat them by 24 points. The final score ended up being 44 to 20. But there was a couple times where we started out a little bit sluggish and we could have dominated and put, we could have just dominated a whole lot better than what I thought we did. You know, we still ended up dominating the game, but it shouldn't even, I don't think the Giants should even have 20 points, honestly. But hey, man, first we're going to start out with the offense. Um, other than the miscues, you know, with the first drive, uh, you know, we went forward on fourth and two and then Dak threw the ball toward the left sideline to Ezekiel Elliott and he threw the ball and ended up getting batted up in the air and a Lorenzo Carter ended up picking it off. Um, then I believe we got, I believe we stopped the Giants and then the Giants had to kick like a 54 yard field goal and they ended up missing it. And then we turn around and we had to, and then we turn around, drove down the field, kick a field goal. The offense did their thing today, man. Dak Prescott was efficient again. He was 22 of 32. He had 302 yards, three touchdowns and an interception. And then he also had a fumble, but that was because of a bad, a horrible snap by Tyler Biosch, man. Tyler Biosch had a horrible day yesterday. Snapping and then run blocking was kind of suspect as well. Obviously, we know, all know he has to get better at that, but that's fine. Dak had an amazing day. You take away that interception, he was nearly perfect on the day. Uh, he, you know, he was he missed 10 throws, but that's fine. You know, 22 of 32 again. The run game, the run game, the run game, the run game. I'm super proud that the offensive line is healthy and we're pushing around and we're dominating teams in the trenches. That's what that's what we need. That's how you win a lot of that's how you win about 80, 90 percent of your football games is through the trenches. And the offensive line did an amazing job yesterday doing that, man. Uh, Zeke, just Zeke and Tony Pollard alone, man. We combined for 185 yards. This is, I believe, our fourth straight week where we average 160 combined rushing yards in four weeks straight, man. Hopefully, this is a continuous streak that we keep doing throughout. I believe we're going to get that next week against the New England Patriots because New England Patriots, they're really, they're not that great against the run. They're solid against the pass, but their run defense has never, ever been great. So, Zeke had an amazing day. He had a 21 carries, 110 yards. He, had, he averaged 5.2 yards a carry. He had a touchdown. He had two touchdowns. He had a rushing touchdown. And he had a nice receiving touchdown. That was a nice play call by Kellen Moore. We did a fake toss. And then Aziz Ozolari, he fell for it. And then he came and trying to attack Dak. And Dak just threw it over his head just to pick your poison sort of thing. And he tossed, Dak tossed it over Aziz Ozolari. And Ezekiel Elliott started high stepping in the end zone, man, for a great score of a touchdown. So... Z just had an amazing day. So did Tony Pollard, man. Tony Pollard had a really great day. He had uh, 14 carries, 75 yards. He averaged 5.4 yards a carry. That was really, really great. Uh, Dak, if you, you know, we did a little bit more than 185 because if you want to count for Dak's four, you know, Dak's six yards that he ran, and then you want to account for Ced Cedric Wilson's six yards, and then you want to account for CeeDee Lamb. We did almost close to 200 again. But, all, but overall, we're just looking at our main people that often get carries, Zeke and Tony Pollard. We did amazing. I loved how we I loved how we were able to get anything that we wanted against New York. Like how I said in my prediction video on Friday, um, I know that, you know, there was a lot of keys of winning the game. And I believe that we did a lot of those things. Like I said, I, I said, let's attack the secondary. And I knew they were going to attack the secondary just based off of they, they're not that great against the secondary. But especially with freaking uh, James Bradbury talking mess and how we're a dink and dunk offense. And we have no explosive plays. Well, we had some explosive plays yesterday against them too. And you see the lamb, man. CD lamb. CD Lamb right here, man. Uh, I don't really have the full length of the uh, the clip or anything like that. But CD Lamb had a nice touchdown over uh, James Bradbury, man. A really, really nice key touchdown that put us up. That took that took the lead and the score. We would end up being like 10 to 0 at that time. He just straight up killed James Bradbury off the line. And then after speed burst, after he got a little like a step or two on him, he kept running, outran James Bradbury deck. Threw that ball with great ball placement through right in the bucket. See, Lamb burnt James Bradbury, man. So, you know what I'm saying? 
I knew we were going to attack him, especially talking, you know, him talking mess in that one interview. CeeDee Lamb, so I'm talking about some of the receivers and the people who, not the receivers, but the people who caught, you know, receiving touchdowns or had good receiving days. CeeDee Lamb only had four catches with 84 yards. He averaged 21 yards a catch with a touchdown. Dalton Schultz, our main tight end, Baby Wooden, six catches, 79 yards. He averaged 13.2 yards a catch. Cooper did his thing, three catches, 60 yards for 20 yards per catch. And he had a touchdown as well. Uh, Noah Brown was 3 of 36. Said Wilson was 1 of 35. It was that nice over-the-shoulder throw that Dak threw. That was, an, that was a dime. That was a great catch. He, uh, Tony Pollard had four catches, 28 yards. Zeke had two catches for two yards and a receiving touchdown. So, so far, man, that was offense. Offensively, we got everything we wanted against the New York Giants. There was no mishaps. You take away, you, like I said, you take away the miscues. The offense played an amazing day. It's just sometimes I don't like how they, the only thing I can, the, the only grab I have about it is that Tyler Biotch needs to fix his snapping. Um, Dak, that one interception, that wasn't really his fault, but he should have just did a better job over, like, making sure he got the ball, got over Lorenzo Carter. But, you know, it is what it is. Other than that, you can take away that. And then I just don't like how the offense, like, defense either gets a good stop or interception. I don't like how we often stalled out in games. I feel like we need to fix that out too. We need to stop stalling out. Like, you know, we'll score a bunch of points and then we start getting stagnant and then that allows the other team to score touchdowns to make the game closer than what it then it doesn't need to be. That was the other thing on offense, man. And now we're about to talk about this defense, man. Let's go. All right, man. So right here showing the picture right now. I, I screenshot of some of this while I was watching the game on my phone. Yeah, so, so yeah, this game is going to be, you know, I'm doing this video on Monday because yesterday I was all day doing my internship for my school so i was gone almost all the entire day so i didn't really have much time to do a video after uh, my internship yesterday so uh, next week for sure against the giants i'm definitely going to have a uh, not the giants but the patriots i'm definitely going to have a video right after the game directly after the game if i'm not busy on that sunday i will for sure have a, a video going up so let's talk about the individual players Trevon Diggs, man, I already said it. If he just keeps averaging one, he just needs one to two interceptions a game, and he will be defensive player of the year. Unless, like, you know, Miles Garrett breaks the sack, break, uh, I think Michael Strahan holds that record. But if he breaks that record of, like, 22 and a half sacks, or, you know, like, if one of these top defensive players breaks the sack record or anything like that, one of these linebackers, I don't know who really I can think of out there, a linebacker who can outplay Trevon Diggs right now, but Trey, but all Trey needs to do is average a pick every game. He averages a pick every time he steps out on that field. He's gonna have about at least 18, close to 20 interceptions, and I'll definitely easily be defensive player of the year. But this man got a six interception, and this six interception was real crafty to me. He did like not he's not Dion, let's get that correct, but he did a Dion like thing like thing where he let I forgot the dude's name. This is when Mike Glennon was in the game. We'll talk about later on about some of our other players. But Trevon Diggs, like the receiver run a post pattern. He let him beat him by running a post pattern. Then Trevon Diggs has great makeup speed that as soon as Mike Glennon finally saw the, the throw, once he finally saw the route being open, he threw it up. And with his long wind up, that caused Trevon Diggs to run up underneath the ball and get an interception. It was a great interception. And Trevon Diggs dropped a couple interceptions too in the game. So, honestly, Trevon Diggs, at best, should have two interceptions right now. So, you know, he at least he got one. His streak is still alive. I I'm definitely believe he'll get one next week against the Patriots. But we don't know, man. We're going we're gonna to go out there and ball, hopefully, against the, uh, the Patriots. But, you know, Trevon Diggs did his thing, man. Tied most through first five games in team history, more than Don Bishop back in 1961. Don Bishop was really solid, too, back when he played for the Cowboys. Uh, you know, this six interception, I believe he's gonna have many more. And then we're gonna talk about more people in, on the defense, man. All right, man, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna still talk about the defense while I put this graphic right now. But Michael Parsons, he did his thing. He had a really, he had some nice his goal line stands against the Giants too. He was great in the run game. That's the reason why he's our like either our best defensive player. Where he's the utility player, jack of all trades, master of all. He can play on the defensive line. He can play all over against the defensive line, honestly, except for really like three technique. But you know he can play left in, right in. 
I will, you know, weak side linebacker, strong side linebacker, middle linebacker, it doesn't matter. Michael Parsons does it all, man. He did really, really great in the run game and the pass game as well. Leighton Vanderers did great too. He had four tackles. Uh, he had a tackle for loss, a nice tackle for loss when we stopped the Giants again on the goal line when they were trying to go for it. Jaron Kurtz did his thing today. Uh, on Sunday, I mean, Malik Hooker did his thing. Trevor Nick got a pick, of course. Ken O'Neill was solid. DeMonte KZ was solid. Jordan Lewis was solid. Anthony Brown, hey, you see why I'm going to turn his head around? He catches the interception. He had a pick six, man. Um, you know, I'm really proud of this defense, man. Um, obviously, I forgot to mention at the start of the video, but, you know, you know, prayers up for all the injured players that the Giants had. You know, they had Saquon out. Andrew Thomas was out. Kenny Galladay was out. Dayon Jones had a freaking nasty hit yesterday. You know, I'm going to get into that right now. So, people, a lot of people are trying to say that it was a dirty hit. But it's like, once you escape that pocket, no matter who you are, except for, like, if you're Tom Brady, they're not going to hit you as hard. Aaron Rodgers, maybe. They, they hit Aaron Rodgers hard, too. But if you're a running back, or if you're a quarterback, yes. So, if you're a quarterback and you escape that pocket, you try to run, you are now a, a running back. Yes, you are still the quarterback that if you get hit trying to slide down, they're gonna call. They're gonna penal, They're gonna penalize the defense. But Deion Jones thought he was fat. He thought he was faster than Jabril. Jabril got off the block, ran. Met. They both met up. It was athlete versus athlete. They both met up on the one yard line. Deion Jones was trying to lower his shoulder and trying to run into Jabril, and Jabril wasn't having it. And Jabril did a nice. Did a nice hit. It wasn't like it was helmet to helmet or anything like that. Jalen Jones lowered his shoulder trying to run over Jabril. He didn't. And that caused him to get concussed, man. Hopefully he's fine. Nothing, no severe damages or anything. You know, it's the game we play. Everybody says that, you know, you're playing sorry teams, you know, the past, what, week and two weeks or whatever. Because not saying Carolina's sorry, but, you know, you kind of are if you lose to somebody like Philly. But, you know, the defense did their thing yesterday. That was a nice hit by Jabril. It wasn't dirty at all. It was a nice clean hit. Oh yeah, like I said again, you know, injuries are just something that happens involved and you know that evolves in the game, man. It's something you sign up for. You already know what you're getting into, man. So there are no excuses. It's fine. We play with any we played it. We we had we had hella injuries when we played them last year when we played them in Dallas in the same week. A year ago we played them with hella injuries. This year we still have some injuries. We had yeah, we still had major injuries. You know, we didn't have Demarcus Lawrence and we didn't have a bunch of players too, Lel Collins. On suspension we didn't have michael gall so we had injuries too so it's not like we were completely and it wasn't like we was fully healthy or anything like that so you know overall man overall man i'm just really proud of this team we did our thing man you know you compare you're looking at the stats right here points per game allowed way less than what we did last year rush yards allowed we're doing really really great almost 78 yards less than what we were averaging pass rating is still pretty solid but it's not really amazing or anything it's not over 100 we're averaging almost three takeaways a game so i'm really proud of this team offense defense it was it was a sloppy game we definitely have to fix it up because we're playing against bill belichick and he's known for stopping great potent offenses like this i don't think he's gonna be able to stop our run game but it's gonna be pretty difficult in their pass game not not really because they're not because i believe we're going to get i want to get michael gall back this game but one more week we're not going to have our, our offense back at full strength after the bye week. So Halloween is when you're going to see this offense fully healthy against the Minnesota Vikings on Sunday night. This is going to be a great game next week against the Patriots. It's going to be really great, really physical. It's going to be a, it's going to be a tough battle. I think it's more li most likely going to be a defensive game. I believe that if Dallas does their thing. I believe we're going to be able to get the win next week on Sunday against the Patriots. So thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully you guys like, subscribe, and share it to the video. Hope you guys have a nice day. Bye.